welcome to Winterberg in Germany, where we are enjoying some of the brightest, sunniest conditions so far in this FIB TV Eastman World Cup season. And here at one of Germany's prime sliding venues, we're ready for the first of two heats of round four of the two-man bobsleigh World Cup. Crowds lining the track, eager to see a German victory, which so far has not happened this weekend. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me, NBC's bobsleigh expert, John Morgan. John, this looks like an easy track, but the devil is in the detail. It's a short 1,330 meter track, one of the shortest on tour. Very easy to get down, but watch the way it drops off here really quick. And this curve coming up, they added this about seven years ago. It used to be a longer straightaway. This little chink curve here causes lots of problems, especially in bobsledding where they got to load the sled, get in, can't make any mistakes here. Exit this big omega curve, and then they go uphill. See this section here? Uphill here, you can make no mistakes. No, the sled's got to be quiet. Then the sled just starts to rocket out of four, six. Now into the big Kreisel curve coming up. Kreisel, big 360 whip around. You want to exit with the slingshot effect. The bottom part of the track, curve nine. This is where all the problems are for the athletes. Up and down here, you can get into a skid in 10. And then now watch how quick this 11, 12 comes at you, a labyrinth right. Hard left, bang, into the finish. Uh, uphill section of the finish. Very easy track to get down, Martin, but pretty tough to get down fast. Well, normally it's one mistake that costs you any chance of moving up in your run. So far this weekend, in women and men's skeleton and the women's bobsleigh, we've seen the track record destroyed. Stephen Holcomb has been unbeaten so far in World Cup racing in the two-man this year. He leads the World Cup rankings with a perfect score ahead of Germany's Francesco Friesi. But look at young Corey Butner, the US athlete, in third spot in those overall rankings. However, now we're back in Europe. There's a load of new sleds join the field. We've got some smaller nations that compete normally only in Europe, but we've got some big guns. And here's one of the biggest, Beat Hefti, the Swiss, owns the start and the track record here. They've stood for four years. The ice has been so fast this weekend already, everybody's questioning whether they will last for four minutes into this men's two-man race. Well, there's Manuel Mahata, one of the drivers who would love to put Germany on the top step of the podium here, John. They led off the first heat in the women's race, but they have got a lot of work to do here. Simone Batazza of Italy leads the field away, but you've got to look then behind him at Rush Arm, Zubkoff, Holcomb, unbeaten this season, and the rest of them for fast times. Well, the track this morning, really an advantage to the people. One off early at women's bobsledding. Great race we saw. Floor Schutz makes his yep. debut. Watch out for him. He won double here last year, two and four. And then he tore up that Achilles and uh, a calf injury. We didn't see him the rest of the year. Well, preseason injury this year has kept him in Europe as well, but he is still Germany's number one slider. Top of the track and the best start draw, perhaps, for Italy's Simone Batazzo and Francesco Costa. They will head off this 27 sled field. You can see the crowds here. Uh, they, they like their bobsledding in Winterberg. Simone, look at the lines, 529. He's our rabbit, the team, 62.8. Keep your eye on that. That's the telltale sign. Up top, no mistakes allowed up here. Right down the middle. No steering variance at all. There's a tap. It's sound like much but when you're going only going 35 miles an hour that makes a big difference entrance to Kreisel will give you the entrance to Kreisel speed now the exit of Kreisel speed that's it there 100 kilometers the track looks fast yes it does bright sunny conditions but bob sled tracks are built on the shady side of the mountain to avoid problems with the sun the ice is glassy fast 132 kilometers now 82 miles an hour 56.05. The all-time record is 55.86. Track record's going down. Two tenths. Track record's going down. After that right there, Simone's been about 30 hundredths off the pace each heat consistently this year. And only because he gets a deficient start time. His start time, 529. 
I think the track record's going down the next run. Next guy coming up. Right. Look at the power. Look at the brake pit's head. Now, see it's going down, up and down, side to side. When you see him going side to side, that's a waste of energy. There's some great instruction there for Francisco Costa, veteran brakeman for Simone. Watch him flick the push bar down. He's got a little mechanism there. Sometimes that doesn't work, which causes a little stress. Top of the ice, Lyndon Rush of Canada. Jesse Lumsden, former CFL player, behind him. Jesse uh, will be joining us in the announce booth for the team's competition later on this afternoon. But first, he's got a job of work to do. Start record as well, 5-0-7. That is going to come under fire here. Two big, powerful athletes should get probably the teens here. 5-18. 1100's better. I think the start record's safe. Let's see, we're going to think we're going to see a 07. We might see some lows, maybe some 511s or something. One thing that's not safe is the track record. He's 2200's better than a team who just came down, who was only, what, 2000's off the start or the track record. So if you start seeing 31, track record's in jeopardy. This is a good run over a kilometer and a half faster than the Italians. Already over 60 miles an hour and accelerating hard into the Chrysler. 34. So at this pace, the track record is history. Jesse Lumsden, who crashed in the final run in Whistler. Same speed as the Italians down at the bottom. Track records for London Rush, 55-64. Well, there you go. It didn't even take four minutes from the start of the race for it to go. Second sled out of the box. New track record. How many more times will the mark be lowered? Well, John, that's very nearly a quarter second quicker. You know, today we've just seen so much pace on this ice. High fives from somebody carrying a Canadian flag at the bottom. But here's into Kreisel. Exit. Look at the lines. Now he's a little bit above the drive lines. Then he comes back up. That looked like a little wave in there. I, don't, I think he made a little mistake there in the cries. Good pick up. It. Good pick Everybody up. Everybody backing home up early. Love y'all. Love you too, Jesse. What's the start? There's Lyndon. 518, tell him. Oh, okay. 518. A little enthusiasm there, right? Huh? Well, you know, a couple of errors oh, maybe. Max Arndt's Meanwhile, already off. Max Arndt's already yeah, off. Yeah, Max Arndt not hanging around. Started wow. 531, though. Not a great getaway. Boy, he must have went quick. Well, we missed the, the top of the track. track. Eight mistakes. He's a quarter of a second back, three tenths back. That's a start. He doesn't get a good start. 5.31 start. Something yeah. happened there. And there's mistakes as well. well. Of course, we didn't see it, but uh, something happened to him at the start. 100.5 kilometers an hour. Now, that's top speed. We've not seen anybody that quick. Yeah, he's a good pilot. You expect him to come back here a little bit, but 3100s, he's going to have all he can do to get within two tenths here. Big Same speed, speed at the, the bottom as everybody else. 55.93, quarter of a second back. Yeah, but he's 1300s back at the start, and he's 2900s back at the bottom. All things being equal, 1300s, he should be 3900s. Yeah. That means he drove a better sled. Made mistakes as well. When we picked up the sled, he was already skidding into the wall. Okay, we're hearing now disqualification. He started before the green light. That's why That's the camera why we crew were not ready for him. There's a two-minute interval between each sled starting. And until that red light goes green and the 60-second countdown starts, you can't go. Max Arndt is out of the race. Unbelievable that a veteran guy like this can make that type of mistake. Well, you know, listen, you, listen, listen, listen. You can jump offside in a scrimmage. Look at the coach. Rennie Rennie Spies there, local boy. Listen. He won a minute to where he had to. We didn't pick him up yeah. till the... Look how disappointed these guys are. We know, and John, for safety reasons, you have this two minutes between the sleds to allow the other sled to get out of the track. Because these things moving at 75 miles an hour, you know, they weigh 600 kilos, 1,200 pounds. So it's going to be a bit of a long wait now for Alexander Zubkov, and that is the most schoolboy of schoolboy errors. Zubkov taking his time here. Well, he's got to wait an extra minute because Arndt cleared off. They got his sled ready. I still think it's two, it'll be uh, two minutes ten from the time he gets to the finish line. 
The light's been on. You see, look at me. Very you hear, you hear cool. the ding dong? Yeah, really cool, calm dude here. So, didn't take long. Track record, then a disqualification for just stupid stupidity. Oh, unbelievable. You ever seen it? I'm from the Germans. Yeah. In one of them. Zubkov doesn't get the start in the two men that he does in the four. 522, pretty decent tap there. Big speed in the last 63.2. That's, that's similar. Good. That's that similar. That's way better than Jesse. Yeah. No, that's about similar to Jesse. Yeah. He's plus seven. Probably stopped the bleeding right there on Jesse Lumpster. Beautiful line there. Now versus where it just drops out of a three-story building. Plus eight. 95-3. He's going to exactly need... Exactly the same as the Canadians. Well, that won't do him any good unless he has better speed here at this next exit point on the left. Right now, the speed 1.7. That, 100.7. That's better, but boy, he's late there on 9. A lot of pressure on 9. 132 kilometers, which is 82 miles an hour. It's a dead heat. He's got the big speed. He'll take the lead. It's going to be a few hundreds in it. Track record. New track record. Four hundredths of a second he leads. Wow. What a day we're having here in Winterberg. Woke up to a beautiful morning. The, the weather has remained stunning. The crowds are enjoying it. And we've got two track records and a disqualification in the first four sleds. Amazing stuff. And this is supposed to be the simple track where not much happens. And Zukov really hadn't done that well at two-man this year. These were the quiet lines, the speed. Here he comes at the top of the track. I mean, he was just perfect. No variance, although the brake, break, we see him bouncing yeah. around back there a little a bit. bit of a bubble. Yeah, this is a curve nine. Well, Alexander Zukov leads the race from Linden yes. Rush. Oh, that's Yanis Rodrick. Becker, his brake man. Oh, no, it's Alex Rodriguez. Okay, well, that's a late change because Yanis Becker was down on the entry list. Yeah. So all sorts Maybe of Maybe that's another reason why they're squalified. <laughs> we didn't see that. Oscar Smelbardis next up with Dalman's Driskins. Now then, 5.07 is the start record. Is he going to see this as a challenge? He's going to get close. He's going to break it or be real close. Let's listen. A couple big tight ends pushing this sled. Probably at least a 5.0. 510. Oh, big mistake though. 512. Big mistake. There's that's him. He just doesn't have look at the speed. 6270 is a kilometer down already. That's relative to the way you saw those runner tips going back and forth. He's the only chance he's got is when he's great start and he's gonna make the mistakes down the track, but he's gonna make them make him at 70 miles an hour and not 20 miles an hour. Yeah, this is the opposite to your road car. You make a mistake in a road car at 20 miles an hour, it doesn't cost you much. You get sideways at 70 and you're having a much bigger accident. This is the opposite. You lose more speed when you're going slower compared to when you're going faster. Not a great run through corner nine. No. He's inexperienced, but he's the best pushing driver in the world. He's probably the only guy in the competition that'd be one of the best brakemen in the world. Yeah. And he's in the front seat as a driver. And, just you know, needs time on the ice to learn how to control that speed. Learn, you know, and he doesn't put two good heats together. He's always got one good one, one bad one. This is probably his bad one. It come out the next heat, keeps that, that sled straight up above curve one. He'll do much better. Well, he was still in short trousers when Zubkov started to race luge at World Cup level. So he's got a lot of making up to do on some of the fastest guys. Look at the power. Look at the calves. Look at the size of these guys. In huge man to get down. This is the mistake here, though. Look, look at the runner tips. Look at him playing with it. Try to stay with the wall. Airborne. Well, that's on a he... scale of one to ten, ten being a big mistake. That was about a twelve. Yeah, I was getting on there. They didn't use their helmets, but apart from that, it wasn't pretty. Next up is Corey Butner of the USA with Johnny Quinn. Some sled changes going on in the Bodine program. Rector sled in uh, the States in Whistler. And so they've had to bring a new sled over to Europe. This is his same sled he was driving in the US. In fact, this might have been the Cunningham sled. Johnny Quinn. 
Kentucky guy, football player. There's another mistake by there. Oh, Two in a row. Dear. He's done. Two rookies, not rookies, but, you know, Mel Bardis. Yeah. And, you know, Corey Butner here are inexperienced. And probably Corey's first time on this track. Yes, He's only had three practice trips. But now it's, uh, he hopes to point the sled dead down the middle the rest of the way because as I said, when you make a mistake like he just made and like Mel Bardis made, he's a little late in that curve, late there in that curve too. Well, let's underline the difference between today and training, John. It's snowed every day in training. This is a different, clear highway. It's a lot faster. Yeah, this is a lot oh, faster, and, which means he hasn't prep, been down this track. He did crash in practice, and I think that's where he crashed in practice. But uh, there's an example of somebody going really close to being over. Great speed at the bottom still. Yeah. He beat Mel Bardis. Yeah. And Mel Bardis beat him at the start by 1600s. And it's not as if he had a clear corner one either, Corey. Yeah, he didn't have a very good start. He's even having better starts than that. But he almost had a long 100 yards. Here's the start. The first mistake. This mistake only cost them time. Same thing, Mel Bardis. Watch how violent that right hit is. And the back end of the sled yeah. come up in the air. That's that's 3,500s right there. And then watch out of curve nine. You want to be a bobsledder? Take a look at that. Don't do this. Ooh, boy. Curve nine. Personality of this track is curve nine. Watch this picture. They slow it down. Whoa. It's the wrong way to be looking at the track with your runner's airboat. We don't have jumps here apart from in Cortina. Runners off the ice. That's not good. Well, next up for the USA, Steve Holcomb, Kurt Tomasiewicz. Holcomb unbeaten in World Cup racing in the two-man this season. Well, start, he's going to have to get into the high teens, low 21 or so to start. 26. Wow, he hasn't been behind Zukov all year at the start. That's going to be tough to chase down Zukov now. He might get this to 8 or 9, yeah, 8. Probably get to 9 or 10 and then might neutralize him the rest of the way down. Good lines there, though. Familiar Matt Black on his Bodine sled. Yeah, 15, this isn't. He needs to find something yeah, here. Yeah. Well, this, again, he's, he's been having great starts. He was right up there with Lyndon Rush at the start. Now he's 800s behind Lyndon Rush. No speed. He's wow. a kilometer and a half down. Not a bad line there out of nine. Let it flop. These are good lines here. 132 will really help him at the bottom. 133 is Biggest really speed good we've speed. seen so far. How close can he get to the Russian? Oh, Quarter time second back. away. Wow. Okay, he lost time all the way he down the track. He lost time in the first 50 meters. He's He's been right there with Lyndon Rush at the start all year. Now he is 800s behind Rush at the start. and. You know, behind Zupkov by 400s. He's been beating Zupkov at the start. Wow, you know, wasn't a bad look at start. The, look at his head. Look how perfect line there. Kurt Tomasiewicz yeah. in. Look at that. Look at the speed before Omega. It doesn't sound like much, but Rush had a better start time by 400s on Zupkov, but Zupkov had a better two tenths kilometers better. That tells you Zupkov got in the sled much better. The four finish there, though. Yeah. Whoa, was Holcomb flying on the bottom. Whoa. Another 100 feet of ice. He'd have taken the yeah, lead. Yeah, yeah. A little, a little perplexed, Steve Holcomb. We talked about Kaylee Humphreys in the women's race, not being behind all season. Same for Holcomb. Now he is. Chris Spring of Canada. Canada, two with Ben Cookwell on the back handles. Good technique, Ben Cookwell. Good turnover and drive there. Dead straight, 528, pretty much like Holcomb. will tap speed in the left. 63 flat, nowhere near the speed of the other three sleds. And that's the load. That's getting in, getting down, getting at the right pressure point, getting over the top of that hill, getting all your weight in the sled so Mother Nature and gravity can take over. And of course, ooh, that's a tap. You saw the ice come up. Can't do that at that part of the track. Chris Spring coming off a Best finish ever at Whistler. Four man Bob with a medal. So this is his first trip after that medal. 
Lines a good little skid there, though, out of nine and a ten, which means he's got to steer around ten. You don't want to steer down here if you don't have to. 131 speed, not the number. Coming into fourth place, fifth place finish at the bottom of the track for Chris Spring. And uh, just to say hi to one of his brakemen who was rushed to hospital yesterday. And uh, so there's going to be some changes in the sled. Derek Randall would have expected to be in the four-man sled this weekend. May not slide till after Christmas. Here's the mistake. Watch him come to the left side of our screen. Watch this little tap. Doesn't sound like much, but this pushes. Watch this. It pushes him away into the middle of the next curve. And then there's some serious steering adjustment. More steering into the, not the guy who drives the most that wins, it's the guy or girl who drives the least. The next up for the USA is a reliveried sled, National Guard, Guard sled for Nick Cunningham and Chris Vogt. Now this is a Latvian sled here, I think. Yeah, so this is the new one. That. Is it? Looks it. It's our time, boy. Let's go, baby. Two National Guardsmen in this sled. No, I think this might be his slide. I think it's his four-man that's different. Ah, uh, I think four you're man. exactly right. Well, this exactly looks like right. a Latvian, though. This yeah. doesn't look like a Bodine. Doesn't have the familiar no, Bodine no, lozenge nose, no. but a good start from M524, just a couple of hundreds behind our race leader, Alexander Zubkov. Yeah, both Cunningham and Corey Button and his tongue, two yo young US pilots are coming in on a real high off the North American swing. Just avoids the wall. Quarter second down, speed's not bad. 102 kilometer speed is what he's looking for here on the left. Oh, he's way off. Way off. A lot of trouble there. A lot of noise. First time in Europe. Both he and Corey Butler have only raced in the USA up until now. 130.7 at the bottom of the track, eighth place with a 56-27 slide. And of course, for the US athletes starting at home in North America, means tracks they're more familiar with. Now they take their lead from the veterans like Steve Holcomb and the coaches. What to eat, where to go, how to find their way around all these new venues. Here's the curve nine. You know, he doesn't make a little late. Watch him come over, tap, watch the skid sideways, back end hits. Here's some real good pictures of... It's not the line. When you get your runners up near the wood, look at them. Ooh. Coaches Brian Scheimer on the right. No good going in. Also. Mike Kahn on the left. Now, Manuel Mahata being very cautious about when he leaves the start area. Germany already down to two sleds. After a big mistake by Max Arndt saw him disqualified. Manuel has been lacking at the start. 30, probably. 32. Wow. You know, he came out a couple years ago and had a lot of promise, but his starts were better. And I thought just because they're in North America, the starts are bad, they're just sort of sleeping in the early part of the season in the peak of St. Moritz, but he's going to do anything in a two-man bobsled. He's going to have to improve that start time. He can do all he wants down here at the bottom of speed. He's got to drive the perfect line to have a chance to get the podium down. And it's tough to drive the perfect line to the second of runs. When you talk about St. Moritz, the World Championship venue this season, that's one of the only tracks where the start almost doesn't matter. It's about getting the rest of the run right. But here, so much of your impetus comes in that short oh! start there, and he could go yet. He's held on to it somehow. Exit of 12 of 13. Who gets that wrong? Well, a lot well of Manny Mahata does. Coaches, coaches. Yeah. 56 0 1 in fourth place, but my goodness. You know, I talked about them sleeping in the early part of the season. I think Manuel fell asleep here between 11 and 12. I tell you what, he woke Christian Poser up in the back seat. I don't think I've ever seen a sled do that here. Oh. Yeah, he laughs. Oh, oh yeah, we've seen Only because they got away with it. Usually they tip over when they are. Watch the articulation of the sled. He's late. Watch, he's not steering. 
Well, watch this, watch the tick, watch the sled split. Yikes! <laughs> this is what Lewin or could do to you. Right there, look at the coaches. Oh, yeah. Sven Ruhr on the left, former brake man, just impassive. He's just stowed. <laughs> wow, now look at this. Ten sleds down. Alexander Zubkov, our race leader. We still have 17 to go, battling for 10 places, remaining in heat two. Welcome back to Winterberg in Germany, where Thomas Florschutz is about to make his first World Cup start of the season. Listen to the crowd. This guy swept both events last year here in Winterberg, and the giant Kevin Kuska gets in the back of the sled. 63-2, not one of the top speeds. Fourth best start time. But he flew here last year. Look how low he is on the helmet right below the cowling. He's got to be Germany's remaining hope of a medal yeah. in boss sled. The women came up short, Big 700 speed. back. Huge speed here. He gets 102 kilometer speed here. This could be the lead. Not as quick as Zubkov still. No, no speed there, plus 10. He's going to lose more time back here at the bottom. OK, at the moment, only third. So still behind Alexander Zubkov and Lyndon Rush on time. Yeah, this looks like third. Oh, no speed at all. He, he might, might even drop behind Holcomb, Holcomb into fifth place. Third it is, though, at the line. 200. 200 ahead of Stephen Holcomb of the USA. Unbelievable. <laughs> Germany. Well, you said the Florsters, he had such a great start to the season in two-man and four-man last year. Achilles injury in Altenburg, Germany, put an end to his season. He had a pre-season injury as well. He's been racing in Europe. He's won four Europa Cup races, clearly. So he's back on form, but... There's the replay showing the Kreisel. After Kreisel, he had the sixth best speed. Into Kreisel, he had good speed, 95 kilometers, but out of Kreisel, maybe watch the sled, you know. He must have done something in Kreisel we didn't see because that wasn't the run I expected out of him. <laughs> There's the Russian girls who are sliding earlier on today. Now up at the top of the track is Rico Pater, Swiss one, with Seaman Friendly behind him, was racing in North America. And uh, now he's been joined by teammate Bad Hefty, who we'll see in a couple of sleds' time. Enrique Peter will probably, before mid-season, be back into Swiss 2 position. Don't expect Hefty to be going that slowly. Didn't look like he hit it. 
good transition in there. Not a bad start for him, 5.30. Speed less than 63 kilometers an hour, which is just under 40 miles an hour. But better than Oscars Melbardis, who started 5.12 and didn't get through the first couple of corners cleanly. So it, it all, every element has to be right, John. You can't just start quick and hope. There's a few elements to the sport that all add up to success at the bottom. And this new sled here has got the same speed. The German sled, yeah. Florschutz, just came down, which is good for the Swiss. A little bit under the... Still way off top pace and late. Bang. Now he's going to do some big steering in 10. Let's see if he caught up here at 11. Yep. 12. Not bad. Decent speed. Seven, very so good. This is a pretty quick little run. Brings Fifth. himself from This is a good run for him. 10th at the start, 5th at the bottom. They Swiss like that. Nine, seven slide, yeah. That's a good run with the start time. 10th best start time, 5th best finish. He beat Mahata. Yep. Good drive. On the German track. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Yes, it is. Again, getting in is all part of the act. How far over this crest you run at Winterberg is the big question because Johnny drops fall away left. real fast. Yeah, I don't think that was a smooth get in. Not a bad power stride, though. That's one of the arts of the brakeman is to just throw yourself at the sled rather than pull yourself in. Good lines and nine, he flopped there. And then he taps here on the take on, pushes him in the middle, left side of our screen. And when you get pushed into the middle of the curve, that means you what gotta steer in the, in the middle of the next curve. Eckhart Faster, that looked like to me down there on the right. Former Olympic champion in 88. Next up, Justin Cripps for Canada. This is Canada three. Brand new brakeman this weekend. Jigier Samuel from Quebec. Again, comes from a 400 meters and decathlon background. Yeah, he's definitely got some legs. Yeah, no kidding. Let's see if they can get straight. Got some shoulders as well. Took him a 19, moment to get in. Great start. Very quick. Speed decent. Should have been better though with that start. That's the entry into the sled. He drifted a little bit out of it before he got to curve one. But you know he's hanging around. Germany three, but Justin Cripps, there's a skid. Lyndon Rush Crewman, another Still example. Still has the lead. Now it's drifted away because of that skid, but he led almost always to the Chrysler. This is not Canada one, it's Canada three. While the start time on this track gives you a superior advantage. Now it gets through nine. Those nice are exit. Really good lines there. Sounds so quiet as well, the sled. That's a sign, sign it's running well. Whoa, he was getting sucked up into the 13 or 12 there. Whoa. Seventh place. Not that bad. is a good, good run. run. Good run. He beat Chris Spring, which is yep. something he hasn't done. But look at that start time. Start well, time. Hundredth in head of, ahead of Simone Batazzo and 300s behind Manuel Mahata. Justin Cripps laboring away to get the experience. Yes, baby. Yeah, baby, they know it's good. Start time is what he's all psyched up about. Well, Look this is his lines. first time racing in Europe as well, John, so... His mistake, he got a little late there. Look at the bag, look at the skid here. He got into that curve late. That's worth 15 hundredths of a second, yeah. you know. That's where he from, went from now being watch the leader to two tenths 11, back. 12, late on 11, sucks him up into 12. He had to steer hard to come off taps here. Goes in the middle of the next curve. Yeah. There is Cripps on the right-hand side. And next up is start monster Beat Hefty. Uh -oh. Owned the start and track record. Set them both November 2008. 507 is the start record. And that was set with the brake man who's still with him, Thomas Lumpart. This is a this is low. 513, 512. Well, now the question is, has the sport passed the by? No, they've still got it. Fastest start of the heat. Good speed, 63-4. Not, I don't know, I don't think, I think Zubkov had better than that. 63-2 for Zubkov, so they got the better. momentum on board as yeah, well. so he had better speed also. Well, you know, him and Lampard are... Pulling away duo. from the Russian driver, 1,500s up. 
95.5. He's been sliding in Europa Cup, but he's been beaten by Florschutz every time out so far. Florschutz didn't have a great look at this speed 101.1. He's half a kilometer better boxes. than Florschutz. This is right on! Way ahead of Zubkov Whoa, on time. Whoa, that got away from him there. Somehow he holds Look at it back speed. in insanely Only Hulk fast. Only Hulk speed like that. Wow! Track, track record. record. <laughs> Yay! He beats his own track record, oh, takes it back from the others. 55-42. John, that is 44 hundreds quicker than 2008. In every discipline we've seen so far this weekend, they broke the track record. Wow, Four these down. records are going to stand a long time. Justin Cripps, first time in Winterberg. He's going to think it's like this the whole time, except, of course, it snowed and it was misty all through training. Yeah. But this is going to be a day of days, yeah, this a is, week of weeks. Well, here's a 10. He jives out of 10. When he comes out, look at that. He flops off that curve. And here, you know, this is an example, I think, of a guy just, I'm not going to steer. And sometimes... The rough rides are the fastest. Well, he doesn't do his trademark barrel roll out of the final corner to win the race, but he Look might have his Swiss that. teammate third too. Yeah, those city of sleds. Flying. Wow, they're going to be motoring in the World Championships in Samaritz. Yeah, he's talking about that. <laughs> Okay, next up, John Jackson, John Baines on the back of the GB1 two-man sled. A lot of noise from the fans here for everybody at the top of the track. Well, Jocko needs to start. 27. Look at the rudder tips, though. Speed. Look at that. He's a half a kilometer down in speed already. Same as Oscar's Melbardis. But again, Melbardis had that problem in the first couple well, of corners off an epically fast start. Listen, Jocko doesn't want to yeah. do what Melbardis did, but oh, he's in 12. That's for sure. So he needs to be perfect Ooh, at that. Ooh, a lot of runner tip flex there. He's caught the skid, but it all takes time away. He's, he's way off the pace. 27 to 42 back. Jumps out of the top 10 spots. Big day yesterday for British sliding. Shelley Rudman took Ooh. gold. Another clatter there. In the Ooh, women's watch skeleton. out here. He's late. Paula Walker Locked. crashed in training on Wednesday, Thursday. But uh, Jacko keeps it upright. Not a good run, though. No. 14th place. That leaves him at the tail of the field. I think the coaches are both pretty shocked. And a uh, couple of his four-man brakemen have picked up injuries as well. They're not here this weekend. So there's a couple of new guys in the crew. That's going to take away a little bit from their smooth transitions at the start in the format. Well, the rudder tips, we saw them all over the track. Here's a curve nine. Watch him hit on the right side of the screen. Now he's forced down to the left. Look, he's coming to the left side of our screen, and he's got to skid into the next take on. Here's the mistake. He's too low, and then he has to come back up, centrifugal force, and that forced him into one. A steering and curve 10 that not a good run for John Jackson. Well, they started training on an ice on a snowy track, so now they have to anticipate what's going to happen. Next up, Edwin van Kalk of the Netherlands. You'll see him take two or three steps. He pulled a hamstring in Whistler, didn't race, and he's opted not to sit in, but he's not going to be much use in pushing this sled. Sibrin Jansmar on the back will have to do all the donkey work. Oh. He's jogging. Yeah. It's just to break the inertia. 5.42, and that's really almost a single-man push, but you can't avoid... Same speed, though, as the... Yeah, exactly, the sleds. as Jacko, yeah. yeah. His goal is to get the top 15. Watch out, look how low his head is here. For a six foot six guy, it's pretty good. We know right now, with such a big field, his goal is to make the second heat, to make the top 20, and to make the cut. Speed's pretty good considering the start time. Yep. You know, this has been a scene of some really epic weekends for the Dutch. I mean, in a women's race, Esme Campus broke the track record with the first sled out of the shed and finished in the top six. 
Dutchmen have always gone well here. There's always a big Dutch crowd so close to the Netherlands. 131-1, good speed at the bottom, 50. That should be enough to keep him in the second heat. Just two hundreds behind John Jackson, which tells you what kind of a run Jacko had, because Six, Edwin jogged off. Yeah, well, 1600s, 1400s better to start. Jackson had, but, you know, yeah. I gotta believe, look at him, he get out of the sled very gingerly. Yeah. You know, a long season, hamstrings, there's that good faster in the back. Yeah. A little bit. Definitely hurt. Man. Yeah. No, I was it's talking to him earlier. He's going to get more hurt. You know, I was, was talking to him earlier, and he said, "I am going to, I am going to push, because otherwise he adds another hundred kilos to the sled." And Sibren Jansmas, you know, trying to shift almost six hundred kilos on his own. Yeah, but keeps hurting that hamstring. Those hamstrings just don't grow back. That's for sure. We knew by the time the two man were racing in Whistler, he was in physio. Next up is a brand new driver. This is a World Cup debut for Alexei Stulnev. His wife, Olga Stulneva, is watching trackside. She races for the Russian women's team. Let's see if he's got a start. Boy, he looks like he's got a start. Yeah, you're not running. kidding. Let's see what he's got. Is he going to get in the teens? No, 529. There he's... 24-year-old from Moscow with Alexei Pushkarev behind him, another new brakeman. Both big boys. Yeah. Quarter second back. Good aerodynamic profile. Good lines there. He's only been sliding for three years, so he's still got lots to learn about driving these tracks. Decent speed, 94.4. That's 58.7 miles an hour. Kilometer speed, though, you need before you get into curve nine. Down at ten. World Cup 12. debut. He's in 12th place at the moment on the split times. This is a top 12 run from Jesus Alexei speed. Stulnev. Great drive, 56.17. Well, of course, in the lower divisions in the Europa Cup, he'll have raced on this track before, but against different opposition. He's against the creme de la creme here. So his teammate Alexander Zubkov lies second. He lies in 12th spot. Big boys. Yeah. What's well, going to be interesting now? There is the driver of Russia three. Is right up behind him comes Dmitry Abramovich, the driver of Russia two. Bernd Hefty, our race leader, from Alexander Zubkov. And Lyndon Rush, the undefeated two-man driver of the season so far, Stephen Holcomb, lies in fifth spot. Nice thing about that leaderboard is the top five sleds are five different nations. Oh, yeah. Nice and close. Plenty of racing still to come. Martin Haven and John Morgan calling the action. 17 sleds down, 10 still to come. This is Dmitry Abramovich and Sergei Prudnikov, Russia 2. First time we've seen Abramovich in a couple of years. He was, I think he was even beating Zubkov in a couple of races a couple of years ago. 2009, 10 season. Yeah. I, I don't know if he made the he Olympic a, team. He had a good rookie season. Yeah. And you're right, he's been racing in Europe as well in the Europa Cup. Nikita Zaharov and Alexander Kazyanov, who raced in Russia, they've gone on to do Europa Cup racing now. So the Russians mixing and matching their team to suit conditions, perhaps. Ramovich is 16th at the start and making no impression on the leaders at the moment. Still 16th. Good lines. Speeds, not the 100 kilometer speed that you need to challenge. It looks like one of their older singer sleds. It's got the Russian Eagles on the front. It yeah. takes a while normally for them to catch up with the new kit and get them liveried up. 15th spot off a 16th start. Yeah, a little bit of head shaking going on. Pierre Luders with plenty to think about there, the former Canadian slider and now coach of the Russians. Well, again, Dmitry Abramovich with his experience, 15th. Alexei Stulnev, the rookie, 12th. The lines were decent. Look at the heads here. Watch him cross over and come on to take on in a good line. Yeah, there's a, 
got some good expressions <laughs> there. That is Pierre Luders almost at his most animated. <laughs> there is Dimitri. You can see him back in the World Cup field. And next up is Ivo De Bruyne of the Netherlands. Braw van der Zijder on the back of the sled today. Behind them is coach Nicky Minicello, the former women's world champion, the first ever head coach, female head coach in men's pop seven. Out of Dutch here. Oh, yeah, plenty of orange. Home track for the Dutch. Decent start, 524. Tap, speed, 63, flat. Now, perfect lines. He could get the top 10. Well, top eight finish is what you need for the Dutch National Olympic Committee to rubber stamp your approval to go to Sochi. So one of those would be a massive result for him. He's about eighth now. Speed's decent. Skid there, though. Of course, it needs two really tight runs. Doesn't have 100 kilometer speed. He's going to struggle place. down here. He's to tidy this up, really get on top of this. He must know now that he's got to advance his thinking. Decent speed. Just slips average. out of the top 10 into 11th spot. 14th down at the line. The speed was drifting away from him. He lost a lot of time in the bottom part of that track. I think the uh, entrance to curve 10, I think got a nine. He got on the wrong side of the straightaway and skidded into 10. And that, I think, prevented him from accelerating to the speed that you need. Start though. Made his World Cup debut at this track last year. Brakeman with good technique. Look at the heads. Nobody's going side to side. Really, the feet are coming down exactly the same. A little choreography on ice. We'll enjoy that high speed camera tomorrow in four man bobsled. Oh, yeah. Here's the curve nine where I say made his mistake. Now, watch the little skid here. Bang. Now, watch the bus come at us with a little bit of a skid. Oh, Ooh. They saw the same thing we saw. Yeah. Third in the Junior World Championships at the end of last season in the two man bobsled. And he's here for the season. Next up, Jurgen Lewaka, an Austrian driver with lots of skill. But without a big start, he and Matthias Adolf need to pull out something oh, yeah. Yeah. mid to low 20s He does here. well. He does well with speeds, but this is a short track, so that start time at probably the 40s. 38, benefit of the doubt, speed 62 and change. Yeah. Well, Jürgen Lewaka with plenty of experience under his belt. We saw the Austrian girls going really well in this morning's race. And uh, he would like to be able to replicate that. But this field at the top of the track is so tough, there's just not enough ice to catch them afterwards. 17th at the moment. Good lines. He's a great pilot. Just lacks the first 50 meters. Close to the 100 kilometer speed, 62 miles an hour. But he could get into the 131 speed down here at the bottom. He's a speed merchant. There it is. There it is. Almost cracks 132. Exactly. Jurgen Lowacker shows he's got some talent. 15th best yeah. finish time. 19th best start. 15th best finish. Anytime you could take your start time and have a better finish time, means you are a good pilot. Lowacker in 15th place. 131.9, 82 miles an hour at the bottom. Not been too many sleds gone quicker than that. Well, he's the 20th sled in the field. Don't forget, one disqualification. Max Arndt left the start before he was allowed to. And so only 19 sleds in the race at the moment. The remaining seven still to come, battling for one spot. As somebody said to us when we're in North America talking about Whistler, this ain't tiddlywinks. We're not playing about at this. So here we go then. This is David Kupczyk and Marcin Navarra, both Polish sleds rejoining the World Cup here. So be paying a lot of attention in our TV truck. The camera crew and the TV crew are all Polish here. They'll be secretly cheering him on. Maybe not so secretly. David suffers at the start. 
If he gets in the 30s, that's expected. 34, not bad. 17th best start, tapped. 62.5 kilometer speed, not good. Well, he's a little like Jürgen Lewacker. You know, the pace that he had a decade ago was good enough. He's still got the same pace, but the speed at the start has just moved on. Yeah. Not bad, got sucked up a little bit in that curve four. 17th place at the moment. That'll put a couple of sleds behind him. John Jackson and Edvin van Kalka. And you need that buffer to try and make the race. 19th. That means he is in front of only van Kalka. Loud sled. 20th place. He's dropped behind the Dutchman. He is the guy who is going to be on the bubble when the remaining sleds come down. 56-4-2, and the first sled to try and knock him out will be his compatriot, his dad Martin there up at the top. Former weight athlete, power lifter and weight lifter. Yeah, and he was a bobsledder, he told me back in the 60s when there was yeah. like 35, 40 sleds in the Polish Championship. They had a natural track back in there, I didn't know anything about that. Uh, Poland, like uh, Romania, like Belgium. Look back in the record books over the yellowing pages. Before it got digital, they figured a lot. Not bad lines. His nemesis start, but you know, he went 16th at the start, 18th at the start, 20th at the finish. It's better to go 18th at the start and 14th at the finish. Yeah. Next up, Poland 2, Matthias Luti and Jakub Pavlovich on the back of the sled. I'm going to get criticism for my pronunciations of that, I'm afraid. It's probably good. Have a look. A few, few guys in a TV truck could tell us how to pronounce it. Yeah. Double visor. That's to stop it misting up inside. We saw Looney a little bit last year. Classic red and white colors of the Polish Eagle in the center of the sled. Oh. Well, didn't get a good start and also rattled off corner zero as well. We know in a field this big, John, it's always going to be tough for the smaller nations to try and break in. They don't have the speed, the manpower, maybe the kit's not quite on the cutting edge as well. Well, you know, the kit you can understand. Start time, you can't really control that sometimes because of the money, but you can control that start time. Well, only if you can find power athletes that are fast enough. You know, well, Germany's got a big development program find in the all the USA break. and Canada. you got to find the drivers. Of course, we saw that at women's bobsled this yep. morning. Unbelievable. How many more brakemen, great brakemen, have gone to the front seat as drivers? 21st spot, so he doesn't make the second heat. And of course, this is all part of the problem. You get six runs in training, you've got to do two man and four man in those six runs total. So he might have done two in the two man, he might have done four in the two man, and then he only gets one run today, so he, he misses out on another run down yep. the track in the second heat. The less experience you have, the less you're likely to get. A lot of movement left to right with the brakeman's head, yep. and he's in before. Looney for the driver. With the runner tips. Right, play with him a little bit. Matthias Luti of Poland with Jakub Pavelok behind him. Next up, the return of the Romanians. This is Andy Miracle. His father lives and works here. There he is behind. <laughs> He's telling him off. Come on, Andreas. Don't let the family down. <laughs> Danut Moldovan is the brake man on the Romanian sleds. They start 5 5 0. And again, John, you know, they're in a battle with the Poles, with the Czechs, the Belgians, the Serbs to get into this race. That's what it's about. Make the cut. Well, his father has been down the track more than anybody here at Woodburn. Passenger sleds. He probably takes 10 trips a day, 100 times a year, or 50 times a year. Multiply that times 25. There's a lot of bobsled here at Winterburn. They've yet to invent a teaching bob with dual controls where the guy in the back seat can help the driver find the steers. 
Not that bad speed considering the worst start of the sleds. But a 31 fives now. Can he make it into the top 20 here? Not no. quite. 56 5 5. Just behind Time David Kupchak. He beat Kupchak at the start. Yep. But I think this is his first time we've seen him, right? But he was, uh, no, he was in, he was in North, North America. America. Yes, he was. Yeah, he was in North America. Nikolai Strati, of course, was the mainstay of Romanian sliding for the last few years. But again, with his dad's heritage, it is going into the family business, isn't it? Look at the back end came out a little bit there. So Andres Niagu, 21st place, doesn't make the cut on this occasion. Whatever the Polish or the Czech is, uh, Romanian is for Comsi Comsa, that's what that was. This is Vladimir Ladic, World Cup debut for the Czech Republic, with Dominic Dvorak behind him. No relation to the composer. Look at the sled. Great livery on this sled, made to look like old boilerplate welded together. John, as a Lake Placid man, you'll appreciate that. Yeah, the flashback to the day. <laughs> 5.37 getaway as well. Not bad at this end of the field. 19th at the start. He's in the race at the moment. And these are nice, neat lines. Good driving. Look at this. Could not check out. I think he's got a no, good shot. He lost a little bit there. away a little. Let's see what he can get off the Chrysler. If he gets 99.3 or so, here he's got a chance. Speed in the left, 98. No, he's a half kilometer down. What do you watch out? Boy, that was a rough line. He's steered about three times, and that's real high there. He's late. Get back late, on top of it. Late, hit more late. Did yeah, read the writing on the wall, and as a result, tastes the ice, tucks himself back in again. You know, does complete the run, but only in 23rd place. Curve 9, he pulled it down too early. And that caused him to go back up on the outlet. And then in Curve 10, he would drift way up top. Well, again, bearing in mind, it snowed through training. He's not seen the ice this fast. And of course, if he was here in the Europa Cup a couple of weeks ago, there was 40 crashes or something. 60 crashes in total in a week of uh, sliding in box sleds. Well, here's where it goes bad. Teddy's way up there. That yeah. sled got way away from him. And now it's, you know, it's, it's survival. He's got no time to recover here. Yeah, the steer, steer, steer hard. He gives let the sled go in the middle of the belly of the curve and up yeah. and over. He's Won't be no the last sled we'll see do that this weekend. Here's, look how high he is there up in the wood. Yikes. Look at the marks he made there. Yeah. And it's, whoa, hello. Not the way to look at Winterberg. Well, his hands come up. He's quiet. Wondering where they were and how much more there was to go. Yeah. He's looking at how much work he's got to do on that beautiful sled. Yeah. But he finished. Yeah, finished the run. Won't get a second one, but the crew are out there okay. He'll get points. He won't be yes, disqualified. He'll, He'll get right. World Cup points. Absolutely right. He'll get more points than Max Arns of Germany. Germany. Yeah. Yeah. What a story. That's got to be in the highlights of Max Arns. You know, the first thing we're going to see is him and then the crash in our top three. But Max Arns being disqualified, chalk that up. To, I've never seen that happen to a top sled. Next up, Mikael Serize with Lino von Dorn behind him, sliding for Belgium. Both Belgian women's crews joined the World Cup this weekend as well for the first time. Yeah, he was with us in North America. A well, big crash in uh, Whistler. Ooh, he went a long ways down the bottom of that, yeah. that track. Well, he'll be wanting to avoid that here. So, out of the mid 40s, probably. 43, and he just skipped. 44, a couple of hits. 61.9 kilometer plus down. Well, only 22nd at the start, so that shows you that he's got a lot of work to do. Look how low his head is, though. He's big man, six foot three.
58.3 miles an hour into that 270 degree Chrysler turn. Nine, this is where all the action is. Pretty good through there. Yeah, made it look very pedestrian, didn't he? He was up. under control. I think he might have been a little overdriving there for safety. Speed, not, not bad. bad. Speed. Is he going to make it in? Nah, He's not. 23rd, 22nd so. place, only ahead of Luti and Laddick. Doesn't make it into the second heat. His problem, though, was up at curve one. He made all his mistakes. Curve one or two, besides the negligent start time. He made some problems there. Exit of curve one, skid. At 61 and a half speed. Well, he got down without using his helmet, which is always a bonus. Well, the big story, John, you talked about it, the disqualification of Max Arndt of Germany. Now, yeah, they're going. I mean, they, we've got this uh, look at isolated. The red light. Look at left. the red light in the left, top left. Great work for our crew in the truck. That red, it's still red. Well, you know what it is? The cameraman's only just coming He's round into the position. Front. The clock oh, hasn't started. The coaches right. are standing there. Come on, guys. Someone's got to tell these guys. What right. did they hear that they thought was the start noise? Now then, Serbia makes their World Cup debut this season as well. Vukrad Janovic, Damien Zlatnar behind him in the sled, and of course his wife Astrid raced for Australia this morning. Vuk is a big guy, but boy, is he in early. Start. Well, again, there's a lot of him to get Decent speed, though. 62 and a half kilometers almost. That's decent speed for that start. Well, only 24th quickest away from the box, though. So, again, a big uphill struggle for them. And is that the sled that Astrid drove this morning? I think it might be. Oh, it's got a number 24. Yeah. Well, she was driving a white Vimmer this morning. A uh, singer this morning, rather. I think that might be the same sled. Well, husband and wife have shared before on this 99.4. Not bad, but he's just... Uh, so he's going to have to be real. Need some motor down here. Yeah. 130.5, not enough at the bottom to unseat David Kupczyk of Poland. 23rd spot. 56-7-0. You talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to find a piece of paper here. I'm looking for this morning's times from the women's race. OK, no, 57s for Astrid, 57-7-8. If it was the same sled, that's a second quicker for the men, and all of that will have come from the added power and weight of the bigger crew at the start and all the way down the track. I think you might be right about that same sled. I'm feeling it. Might. So one sled yet to come in our 27 sled field in another rookie in a World Cup debutante. Rudy Rinaldi, 19 years old from Monaco, with Jeremy Torre behind him, JT. Third in the Junior Olympics last yes, year, he was. Medal, bronze, bronze medalist, and his older brother Alexandre also drove bobsled for Monaco. Let's see what these two young look at the brakeman's energy. A lot of left to right. It's not good coaching yeah. there. But look how slight Rudy Rinaldi is, but he's got a good turn of speed. 5:38. We've seen a lot worse. 62 and a half kilometer speed, though. That wasn't very good there. 20th at the start. That gives him a chance. Can he get the cut on his if first ever race? 63, he might have had a chance, but he's already lost a lot. They didn't have a good entry to the sled. Don't forget, they'll have a quick Christian Reich sled. When the speeds get high, he's got a chance. If he gets there, skid there into the Chrysler. A little high. Got to get the exit right. Comes out nicely. 99 kilometer speed. He'll have a chance. 97, way off. Gone from 22nd to 26th position. Way off the pace. Young oh, kid. And high there high as there. well. Hold on, hold get on. on. Yes, he's nice carving there to get away from that. So Hauls it off. 26th place, though. He will. Oh, no. He beats Vladimir Ladik of the Czech Republic. So he's in 25th spot at the line. Well, he briefed the Czech Republic because the Czech Republic, the Czech Republic came by in his helmet. Yep. And he beats Max Arndt of Germany. Yes. First time. Might be the only time he ever beats Max Arndt. Well, you never know. 19 years old. He's got a lot of years. Skid. 
going into Chrysler. Yeah. Look how high he gets there in the take on. Look at this. Look at that sled way above the runner marks. That's because the sled is crossed up and going in. Yeah. Oh, trying to go in backwards the, on him. Look at the brakeman buried to the left. See, the brakeman's yeah. not comfortable in there. He can't be leaning like that to the left. He's got to be in the middle. So, you know, young kids, great pictures. Brakeman trying to correct the skid there by hefting his body over to the side. Well, Monaco come down, but don't make the heat. Bert Hefty leads after the first of our two heats here. The field will now be cut to 20 sliders. And Hefty and Lamparta, the start and track record holders, will go last of all to defend their lead. And John Morgan, there may be more entertainment and excitement still to come. So stay with us with all the action here in Winterberg. Yeah, Swiss coach is loving that. Yeah, this is definitely Hefty's race to lose. Zubkoff and Rush are going to battle for the bronze, silver. Vorschutz and Holcomb, I think, are too far back to challenge. So confirmation then of the result after the first of our two heats. Bad Hefty by 1800s from Alexander Zubkoff. Stephen Holcomb in fifth place has yet to be beaten in two-man this year. It may be coming. Thomas Vorschutz lies fourth ahead of him. And lots of very close battles in the bottom half of the top 20. Look at that. Could see a lot more changes in this fast track. And still need an answer to what on earth was going on with Germany 3's Max Arndt disqualified for leaving a minute before the start lights came on. Well, lots for us and the fans to ponder and lots of quick racing still to come here in Winterberg. John Morgan with join me, Martin Haven, for the second heat live. Stay with us for that. So, liebe Zuschauer, damit also geht der erste Lauf zu Ende. Für das deutsche Team ist das sehr unglücklich gelaufen und sicherlich ist das auch ein Hauptthema von Interesse, wenn wir zu unserem Interviewer und unserem Interviewpartner schalten. Paul Senske hat dort den Organisationsleiter dieses heutigen Rennens an der Bahn, den Gesamtleiter bei sich am Interviewmikrofon. Wir gehen rüber in den Zielbereich zu Paul Senske. Ja, danke schön, Rolf Reiner. Hier, hallo Schnorbus bei mir. Lass uns mal ganz kurz eben eingehen hier, auch Beatetti und Thomas Lampater. Die waren ja vor 14 Tagen, drei Tagen hier beim Europacup, haben wir trainiert, sind nicht im Übersee gewesen und das hat offensichtlich gefruchtet hier. Das Winterberger Training und die Winterberger Luft. Ja, das kann man so sagen. Ich meine, nun ist Beatetti ja nicht irgendeiner, sondern natürlich schon ein äh, absoluter Spitzenpilot im internationalen Bobsport. Aber er hat auf die Übersee-Tour verzichtet, hat sich hier auch im Winterberg sehr intensiv vorbereitet, hat eine Trainings 